hello there YouTube and welcome back to my random reviews Road to Bond 25 so our next stop is the 15th film in the franchise and that is The Living Daylights directed once again by um, John Glenn based on the um, short story um, the short stories Octopussy and the Living Daylights by Ian Fleming Starring Timothy Dalton. Um, yeah, Timothy Dalton and Marianne Diabo. Um, you know, as the Bond girl, Kara Molliver, 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 And also starring Joe Don Baker and. Uh, Jerome Crab, yeah, Jerome Crab, uh, with Robert Brown as M and Desmond Llewellyn as Q and Carol Bliss as Miss Money Penny. Yes, like I said, Lois Maxwell made her last appearance as Money Penny in um, Interview to a Kill, and we also get John Terry as Felix in this one too. So, you know, new Bond, uh, well at the time it was a new Bond, um, you know, Bond is out on a mission again to stop the bad guys, as usual, with the Bond girl, and also scare the living daylights out of you, as Dalton mentions in this one. So we get some villains in this, the villain... Uh, of course, being. Hold on, what was the villain's name now in this? Do you excuse me a moment. Ah, the villain. Um, yeah, the villain. Where is it? Oh, I can't find it now. Ah, that's it. The villain, General Kaskov. Yeah, Kaskov. Uh, who was a Soviet general and has his henchmen as well. Uh, played by John Rhys David. Oh, hang on. Andres. Yeah. Not, not cross. Um, so, likes and dislikes. So, I like this one. I like the dark gritty tune it got. Now, for 12 years we'd had Roger Moore as Bond. He had some light humour, some campiness to it. But Tim V. Dalton, I think you, he set the standard for the modern Bond. Especially how Daniel Craig portrays Bond today. I thought Timothy Dalton was good as Bond, but I feel that like he played it a bit too seriously. He was like a bit more of a serious Bond. Um, Timothy Dalton's Bond. Uh, but I, I liked his performance in this. In fact, the role was originally considered for Pierce Brosnan, but they decided, you know what, let's have Timothy Dalton, he looks better. So Pierce Brosnan didn't get the part, but that soon changed because, you know, he soon succeeded Dalton in the next dozen Bond films we'll review, but up to now we just got these two Dalton ones to get through. Um, so yeah, Timothy Dalton put up a, a fresh new performance as Bond. Because um, for a long time we had Roger Moore, as I've said already. Um, definitely dropped the campiness from Connery and Moore. And really went with a more serious, straightforward performance. Uh, I did like our Bond girl as well. Um, our Bond girl, um, Kara Milovey. Yeah, Kara Milovey, played by Mary Ann um, the Abo, um, she was, she was pretty attractive in this. She was uh, a very young um, Bond girl. Well, she was about twenty-seven. At, she was around my age. Well, not exactly my age. I'm a bit older. She was twenty-seven when she was in the film, uh, and yeah, was a bit young, but still, not an awkward age gap um, like it would have been with Roger Moore. 
um, you know, and that's one of the reasons Roger Moore wanted to leave. But Dalton, he was great in this, and so was our Bond girl. Desmond Llewellyn, as well, was great as Q. Uh, he was a fun Q. Uh, well, he was the same Q as we've gone to know throughout the years. His Q was spot-on great. You know, always had the gadgets for him, always was smart and fancy, and I love Desmond Llewellyn. Robert Brown again returned as M. Um, his M I find pretty forgettable, if I'm being honest. You know, I've always found Bernard Lee more of the M of the classic Bonds, but, Bernard, but Robert Brown played M uh, in the later, in the last two more Bonds and the first two. Well, the only two Dalton ones. Uh, also, we got a new Money Penny, um, Caroline Bliss, playing Money Penny this time. Had a small part in it, because um, I don't remember much of her in the film, other than a bit where Bond's at Q Branch. Uh, but again, I think they wanted to make her more sexy, appealing, more younger looking after Lois Maxwell called it a day. Uh, so, and I think. To my knowing, this is the only Bond film she's done. Was she in Licence to Kill? I don't know, we'll find out when I get round to reviewing that. Um, yeah, Aha did a great soundtrack for it, the theme song Living Daylights, which was okay. Um, the Dalton years, I don't think it got the appreciation that it deserved. Probably because, like I said, we'd had Roger Moore for a long, long time and people were probably needed to adjust to this. And see, Dalton, he only got, he only got two attempts at this and has gone on to not be a very well-known Bond, but hey, I think it's this is a fairly decent Bond film. So, my dislikes. Um, there were a few moments in there that were boring, but still, this was a lot darker than the usual kind. A lot different tone uh, to the usual Bond films we were known to. Um, but still had the PG rating, but that was all about to change in the next stop. So anyway, yeah, The Living Daylights, I'm going to give this, I'll give it a 3 out of 5, um, because it, it's an okay one. Uh, you know, but like I say, people were probably still adjusting to this after Roger Moore stepped down. So anyway, yeah, that has been my random review, Road to Bond 25. Have you seen this one? Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Share with your friends. If you love horror content, I've got a horror channel for that. And if you love Doctor Who content, I've got a channel for that. They're linked in the cards above or down below in the description, so... No pressure, they're there if you want to see it. I've been Random Ross, and until next time, I bid you all a bye, friends, goodbye.